St. Paul tells us about this in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So let's see the journey of this mystery of lawlessness through history. Let's see the order of events of this mystery of lawlessness. The mystery of godliness is preserved by Abel, and the mystery of lawlessness is advanced by Cain. The devil, having seen that Abel, due to his virtue, would become a carrier of the mystery of godliness, instills the idea of the murderer's action in Cain, and Cain kills Abel. With the death of Abel, it seemed that the mystery of godliness was negated, but Seth was born. Now what's interesting, and someone may ask, did Adam and Eve only have two, three children? This farther proves our point being that Adam and Eve had many children, boys and girls, very many children, but Seth is projected as the one to keep the lineage of the Messiah and to serve as Abel's replacement. And here we have the commencement of the two generations, the generation of Seth, which remains very simple, focused on God, and abides under the will of God and the knowledge of God. The opposite holds true for the generation of Cain, since he happens to be the father of a generation full of apostasy from God, a generation refusing the helping hand of God, a generation that moves on to create civilization. Don't forget that civilization is an offspring of the generation of Cain, and finally, the civilized descendants of Cain, of Cain's generation, reach such deplorable, sinful state where God says the generation of Seth must segregate with the generation of Cain, to stay separate, to not even speak to each other, to be totally separate. So here we have the commencement of two generations, two lineages, two lines which must reach all the way to the end of times, to the end of history, but they fail to stay separate. They intermixed. The devil steps in again, ready at any given moment to negate the work of salvation. And he brings forth the mixing of these two generations, and they all sin, all except Noah. And God says, my spirit shall certainly not remain among these men because they are flesh. And he brings on the flood. Noah and his three children were saved. Sam, Shem, and Japheth. From the three children of Noah, the one who carries the straight line from Seth is Sam, the firstborn of Noah. God is constantly segregating the descendants of Sam and reaches to Abraham. Abraham is a Semite. God takes Abraham and makes a nation the Israelites, and this nation, without me going into great details and bringing up other meaningful events, brings forth one person, the Theotokos, the most holy Theotokos, the birth giver of God, and finally the birth giver of God, the Theotokos, brought the Messiah into the world. Pay a close look at the adventure of this straight line. From the other side, the rest of the world holds on the line of the Antichrist, the entire world. So the church is established upon the earth, and with the presence of Christ, we have the manifestation of the church inside history, a certain action that attempts to negate the work of the Messiah from the time of the Messiah on earth is the action of Judas. Judas works like Cain, who manages to kill Abel. The Holy Evangelist is very overt when he writes that the devil entered Judas, so Judas would betray the Lord in order to foil the work of the Lord. Thus Judas is the spiritual descendant of Cain, and after Judas we have the great confrontation, the first historical confrontation of Christ and the demons upon the cross. The first 
great historical confrontation and the devil lost this battle because Christ appeared righteous upon the cross and Christ resurrected and the battle continues you do remember what we were saying during our last session about the devil the dragon who chases the woman the church who flees in the desert the church continues its journey we are headed for the last days we are continuing our journey we are moving towards the end times and we have two parallel lines of navigation on the one course we have Christ and on the other hand on the other course we have the Antichrist the Antichrist being the servant or the organ of the devil then Arius appears this observation is not mine it belongs to Father Justin Popovich and it states that Arius is attempting to foil the work of Christ by teaching and holding that Christ is not God and this would negate the work of salvation inside the church he attempts to belittle and humiliate the church but the church defeats Arius and we're traveling through the centuries and the ark of salvation the church is floating along this is a sad thing we're saddened by what we're about to say and it's possible some of our listeners may have a negative reaction towards this but if they would study a little bit of history they will come to understand not to mention that Arius was also a priest not only a priest but a most ascetical one most ascetical and yet most heretical and we now come to the Christian West which West is represented from the various corresponding popes from the Pope the Christian West is nothing else other than the secularization of the church the worldly mindset within the church to such a degree where Father Justin Popovich would have no qualms to state and write that the order is Judas, Arius, Pope, Antichrist. But so you don't get the impression that Father Justin is making this up. I will call upon Saint Cosmas the Aetolian. Saint Cosmas the Aetolian was saying, curse the Pope. But why? Christ told us not to curse, not to curse anyone. Now why and in what sense does this saint ask us to curse the Pope? certainly not as a person not the person of each reigning pope but as an office as a symbol which represents a breathless secularized church in this sense you will curse because the western thought can be a curse to orthodoxy because orthodoxy can suffer a terrible and deadly adulteration from the west nothing less than the very elimination of salvation. This battle is no less than furious between Eastern and Western thought, a furious and relentless battle between Eastern thought and Eastern lifestyle versus Western thought and Western lifestyle, inexorable, relentless battles all through the centuries. And finally, the Antichrist will come. The devil will bring the Antichrist, and on the other line of navigation, as I told you, Christ will come, and this up to the second coming, where this entire journey will come to an end. So did you see where this struggle begins? This war begins from paradise, from the first created humans, from Adam and Eve, all the way up to the very end. All of these things that we talked about, my friends, already came to pass. Most of these things came to pass. We are at the end. We are near the time of the Antichrist. The only thing left is just that, the coming of the Antichrist. All others have come. Therefore, we have the historical journey of the mystery of godliness and the historical journey of the mystery of lawlessness. They are navigating side by side and the final confrontation will be a historical one between the reappearing Christ and the Antichrist. St. Paul states this very clearly that Christ will consume, will destroy 
the Antichrist, it will be the very final and decisive confrontation and the victory will be of Christ.